Well, there we are. Another week has gone by, but at least it looks now as if we are really getting somewhere with the lockdown. Now, if you live in a place that's a clear view of the beach, like you do, it's very easy to determine whether you can go for a walk on the beach. If you don't, you need to consult a tide table to ensure that there will be a beach to walk on when you get there. It can be disappointing to turn up and find that the tide has come in. Now, when you consult the tide table in, in, on, the, on the web, you will find that it's actually called a prediction. It's a glimpse into the future made possible by clever people who understand these things and have behind them a record of centuries of extremely accurate predictions. You may also conduct a, a, consult a weather forecast. Now, this is less reliable predictor, but has undoubtedly become more reliable with technical advances in recent times. But where a tide table can be reliable projected for many years, weather predictions are not so much because it's far more complicated with many more variable factors to consider. Now, we live in an age of predictions. Every news broadcast contains lots of them. We make decisions based on what experts confidently tell us. Some of them are very accurate and many are hopelessly wrong. Most are somewhere in between. The most accurate are those that have the most accurate information and experienced predictors with a proven track record. You would have your own favourites, but many seem to pick ideas out of the air. You know these two. But the one thing they have in common is their unfailing ability to confidently report after the event on why their prediction was not as bad as it looked, and anyway, they had warned some time earlier that they might be wrong. Does that sound familiar? Nevertheless, we seem to crave these predictions, if only to ridicule them. Some newspapers and magazines even employ experts at great expense to make predictions based on the position of celestial bodies, and some people take them seriously. But generally, they are taken as a bit of fun and are relatively harmless. Of course, we rely on accurate predictions on everyday matters, and we would be daft not to. You safely predict, given our climate, that you would be unwise to plant your runner beans too early because a late frost could get them. Similarly, you weigh up the possibility of prediction being wrong and take appropriate measures to avoid disappointment. We also depend on trusted sources to advise us based on their knowledge and experience. The medical profession who advise us usually fall into this category and we fail to take serious note of their predictions at our peril. And the mechanic who tells us that if we don't get it fixed, it will soon fail. He should be heeded too. But who do we believe? Well, that's up to each individual. But as usual, it is the trusted sources. Those that have been the most reliable and have proved accurate over and over again. But when we encounter predictions, it may be worth considering where it came from. It would not be unreasonable to trust a proven source but we must still make up our own minds about how we treat predictions. Some are based on sound evidence, while others have more in common with prejudice, wishful thinking and blind panic. Something that is safe to predict, though, is that we will all make predictions based on such factors, and we will continue to get some of them wrong. But if we are wise, we'll make use of those blunders, learn from them, and vow to do it better next time. Now, the great American philosopher and baseball, and baseball player, Yogi Berra, said, Prediction is very difficult, especially when it's about the future. I think he got that one right, did you? <laughs> Have a good week. Keep safe.